when we look into the history of who Heraclius was, he was a man of deep piety and commitment to the Christian faith. Right. Now, do you think that a man of deep piety and commitment to the Christian faith is going to abandon the religion because of the conversation that is recorded in Sahih Abukari 1.7? I want to ask you a question. Yeah. I'm guessing you're a Muslim. You can't yeah. guess that. Yeah. Why you don't get there, so my question to you is about this. Since all of these guys didn't want to answer this question. Okay. Okay. What do you know about Sahih al-Bukhari, book one, yeah. sort of, uh, the number seven, where it, Heraclius talks about it talks about I'm a group not familiar of Muslims. with numbers, to be honest. No, no, I'm going to tell you the story. Yeah, Maybe the story me. will remind you. So in the story in Sahih okay. al-Bukhari, it says that a group of Muslims went to visit the Emperor Heraclius okay. and that they had a conversation and that in this conversation Emperor Heraclius decided he wanted to become a Muslim. Have you heard this story? Yeah. 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 Right, so you're familiar with it? Yeah. Do we need to read it to make sure that we get all the facts or are you quite familiar with the story? Yeah, I know the story. Okay, right. So, now here's the question, right? Here's the thing. Heraclius is the Emperor of Rome. True. Right, one of the major powers of the world. And as you know in the story, he invites all the elites of the Roman world to come to him and says, I've heard about this prophet, I've heard about this religion, and I am suggesting, and I'm suggesting, yeah. Now, I believe now, maybe the story is a bit changing, isn't it? Are you kind of changing the story? Who changed it? You are changing the story. Okay, so this is why I said, let's read it. Okay, let, let, let's read it. Let's read it. Let's read it. Now, no, no, so notice. This Sahih al -Bukhari you yes, have this is Sahih al Bukhari. I'll give you the reference. You can pull it up yourself if you don't believe me. Yeah. Yeah. What are you saying? Is like. Now, notice the Muslims they have tried to intimidate me for the last hour are now scared of me having a debate. So, do you want, do you want to have a discussion? Or not? Okay. So, in Sahih, in, 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 like, in Sahih, in, no, no, no. In in book one, in Sahih seven, I've given the reference. Look, it's here for you. So you can see, I'm not making it up, right? It says in this hadith that a group of Muslims met with the Emperor Heraclius. But right? what's the moral of the story? Get to it. Right, yeah. so here's the problem. Tell here's me. the problem. I'm going to, right? In the story, Emperor Heraclius pulls in the entire elites of the Roman world and says to them that we should change our religion, right? Now, these include all the bishops of the church. These include all the legates of Rome. The, the high senators and he's saying that we should change our religion from Christianity to Islam right how do you think that the entire literate class of the Roman world never ever recorded that event um, I believe because that's not something they want to change like during the history even Christianity yeah. have been changing depending on their desires that's not something they want the history to be saying or reading about by Christians themselves because okay. that's not going to be in their benefit. Why would they write that? They will change it straight away. Right, right, right. So let me address that point because so you've made an argument. You're reading for which your is your book. It's not the same in a thousand years, 500 years. Every couple of years it's changing. So, right. so you can't so, so, actually. So let me, let me reply yeah. to your, your comment. Oh, you don't know. Have you finished yeah, everything okay. you said? Reply. So in this hadith, Bro, he's a right? Snake. Right, right. Now, no, notice his behavior. No, notice Bro, Dawood is saying, so I'm a snake into the decorum. ear. I'm trying to talk to this guy, and he's no, complaining I'm about even, decorum, but look at Dawood's yeah. behavior. Yeah. Right? Yeah, thank you, brother. My thank brothers, you. Wallahi, right? No, no. Now, notice his misbehavior. Notice his lack of decorum. Yeah? So, right? So, so what it says, what what it says, right, in this story, and I agree, the fact that it comes, the fact that it changes is a problem. Because no, this hadith no, no, no. comes in the 9th century, right? comes 900 years later, sorry, 200 years later, in the 9th century. Now, when a historian looks for a historical event, do you agree that they look for something that's close to the event itself? I can give you another Yes? It has to be close to the event. Right, right. Wait, 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 wait. Yes? They come with references. Who said this? Who's the person before him? Right. If the person afterwards is not trustworthy... that's not true. That's not true. Brother, I'm going to reply to what you said. 
deliver. Would you like to enter into this conversation as well then? Okay. Okay, so I'll also message, include you in this debate. The message indicates the Arius. You know about the Arius, Aris Yid. No, 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 we're talking about this, Heraculus. This is what is we're talking Heraculus? about. This is the same, this is right. the same point. So, he sent him right. a message. So where's the evidence? Right, the, the, in this Sahih, in this Sahih Hadith, okay. the entire literate class of the Roman world are brought together and an emperor suggests that we change our religion. How is it possible that you bring together everyone that can write a record not, of the events not. of the Roman Emperor who suggests a monumentous change like changing our religion and they don't even record it, even piously, it's not, it's even to make him look like a hero, they not, never record Islam, it. Islam is not to, ch to change your religion. No, you've not misunderstood it's the point. Be, no, Do you no, even you know the argument that I'm making? The point of Islam is what, what, what's, no. what's the argument I'm making? Because you don't know the argument I'm making, okay, do you? What's your, uh, there you go. So try to understand the argument before you jump in, brother. Okay. Okay. You, you, so my, you, you, so, you, so you let me make you, because you because you religion. because you're forcing. Let, let me let me restate them, no. the right way. Let me restate my it's argument. Monetism. Let me, re let me restate okay. my argument because okay. you've jumped to a conversation, okay. you don't know the beginning of the conversation, and your argument is irrelevant to the conversation. Okay. So let, let, me, let, me, let me try again, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, don't listen to the rude boy. Try to have a decent conversation with me. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. You judge by his behavior whether he's being rude right now and decide whether he might have been rude in the past. You so, hit, you hit some of the I in the face. If you stab you, me with your umbrella, no, 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 you would you also get stabbed. So, ladies and gentlemen. So, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. So, the, uh, this story in Sahih al Bukhari comes 200 years after the event, right? It's first recorded in Sahih al Bukhari. Right? Okay. It's claiming that the entire literate class of the Roman world was invited to embrace Islam by Heraclius himself. Okay? Now, there's, there's no corroborating evidence to this statement. Now, if I just say something that happened 200 years in the past, you would, you, and it was, it was so outrageously I, I, unbelievable, I you, you would ask for other proof, correct? The proof. Would you ask for other proof? The man who, who, who become a Muslim there is something after called this. We, we received this from uh, since Abu Sufyan, the person right. who gave the answers to her, uh, Herak. You get the point? Yeah. And the Abu Sufyan has become a Muslim after this. Go on. Okay. And before the Herak make anything and invite the priest Christianity, he make investigation about the Prophet Muhammad. And he said, if I am there with him, yep. I'm gonna, uh, gonna wash his feet. Right. Hold on one second. He said like. Hold on one well. second. So, so that's what that means exactly. We have, we have that's, proof. No, hold on one second. Let me let me just Muhammad reply to this. Message. Let me just reply to this okay. because here's why I don't find this story in your hadith believable, and you've got to understand what implications that has because I'm saying that this story so is, is made it up. Because uh, it's it's made up. Listen, no, and listen, that's listen. The issue, is it? No, listen. I'm yeah. trying to tell you, if you interrupt less, you'll hear me more. That's self, like, yeah. is it no, I'm, I'm going, to tell No, I'm going to try, it's because after I'm going, no, I'm going, I'm going to try, I'm going to try to explain my point. If you listen okay. to me, I'll I might answer your question in the process of doing that. So 200 years after the event, people make a fictitious claim about Heraclius, about the emperor of Rome. Now, this is a problem for you guys, because it would demonstrate, if I am correct, that lies are in your Sahih Hadith collection. Now, why do I say it's a lie? Reason one. Reason, again, very quickly, I'm just going to lay out my points and then we can discuss them. Reason one. It's 200 years after the event. Reason two. There's no corroborating evidence when we could reasonably expect some form of corroborating evidence. Reason three. Why would we expect reasonably corroborating evidence? because the entirety of the literate elites of the Roman world were brought together, apparently, according to this hadith, to embrace Islam. The people are going to record that kind of thing, that's a big deal. Even the story itself suggests that it was a big momentous deal, because according to the story, they all ran for the gates, crying, no, 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 no. So, according to the story, it was a big emotional thing. Do you know, we have a chapter in the Quran about the room. We're, that's not the. We're not talking. We're talking about this. Hadith. We're talking about this. Go on. History. How do we have the history from a thousand years? Great question. By references. Great note. If there is something in history that no one wants it to be passed to the next generation, they'll just take it off the books. It's disappeared. There's no internet, no Google, no yep. databases. That is true. That Same is true. Thing when the story comes well, after 200 years, yeah. it's all based on references as well. Yeah. If there is some. some 
whatever story that is, they will just cut it because that person is not trustworthy. Otherwise, that means if the reference is trustworthy, we can take it over over next generations until it comes to us. Okay, let, let's talk about how we do history because you've raised that point and it's valid oh, to oh, the conversation. Can you apply no. that on the New Testament? Sam, let me deal, deal with this question. No, no, Sam, Testament? let me deal with this question. Sam, I'm going to Sam, I'm going to interrupt conversations that you're recording Sam, because of I your behaviour. That's can great. You apply the New just remember, just remember that everybody watches this because of Sam, I'll interrupt Dayu. Now, so let let let's let's talk about. Let's that. talk about. Let, let's talk about. Let's talk Can about how we do history. Question. How do we get Can history from the past? The we look for sources. You not can. not authors, sources. You can't. Okay. That's why you don't Secondly, want to answer. we look. Let, no, no, no. Let, I'm just. I'm just. I'm just. Listen. Yeah. I'm telling you how we do history. You what look you for sources. He clearly doesn't. You look, you look for sources. Really Listen. Yeah, are, you, are, you, are you listening? He's saying, right. I don't okay. right. know why so, No, no, no. I haven't, I haven't said, I haven't said, I haven't said that. That's so what Dao would say. Everyone. That's what Dao would say. Just said right That's now. what Dao would say. Listen. Listen. Why are you frightened? Why are you frightened? No, no. I'm going to finish the point that I'm trying to make. Let me finish the point that I'm trying to make. Let me finish the point I'm trying to make. So how do we do history? You look for sources. You look for early sources, you look for independent sources. When you've got these three, listen, 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 if you want to run away, that's fine. I'm not running away, you're wasting my time going over over on a circle. The fourth thing that you look for is archaeological facts, i.e. um like, you know, instruments, tools, you know, uh, like if there's a battlefield set in a particular area, you look for swords and things like that. When these four things triangulate, I'm trying, right, I'm trying to help you. Okay, guys, I'll just, I'll just talk to the camera because he's not listening. And you forgot our tradition, so you don't know his tradition. When you look into these four things and they triangulate, right, what you have is a synergy of history. And then what you need is a hypothesis that explains all the evidence without bending, twisting or changing the evidence. Now, if you've got a piece of evidence, a singular piece of yes, evidence, there is a that's hundreds here. of years later, there that's hundreds of years later, right? That's not corroborated by everything else. Okay. It's can, sketchy, can I, bro. Can I answer sketchy. Yeah. Very sketchy. Like all history yeah. is sketchy now. No, I didn't say that. You see, that's just your characterization. Okay, what would you like to say to reply to that? Would you like to reply to what I've just said? It's like you're saying, you go left and right at the same time. You want to no, that's not that. what I said. You can't saying. follow this conversation. You want proof. You want to prove. This is a, this of the message, hadith. Of the hadith, yeah. yeah okay. This is a message. This is a historical message. I don't want that. That is full of bullshit. Okay. Yes, he is indeed, yes. For 100 years you know, to Herat. Not the hadith, like, what's going to come You can't see. Yeah, it. Like is it still now? Me, yeah. like, I think it's a, it's a, it's a British you don't know what you're talking okay? about. Okay. And that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's like, he's like... I don't speak Arabic. Can we just turn to the English? Well, just, 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 just say in English. Just say in English. Yes, but it's, it's yeah, but I'm not Arabic. Arabic. In an Arabic. But I just want to hear the English. Will you What's the English? Will you trust the translation? His prophet is his tongue is Arabic. Yeah, yeah, but I'm not interested. I'm not interested in the Arabic. Let's hear the English. I'm English. Talk to me in English. What's it saying? In the name of Allah. Yeah. Okay. From Muhammad, the messenger, the messenger from Allah. Yeah. To Herak. I'm never going to uh, Azim Rome. Rome. Is, when uh, I see you, that's what I'm going to deal with you. That's what like, I'm going to deal with you. Like, the, the, the king well, of uh, Rome. I'm a regular here. Everyone knows Peace me. on Go and ask who people on regular basis. Uh, follow the, yes, how the I am uh, uh, guy. Uh, uh, guy. So this guy okay. is a liar. He's a liar and he, he's okay. disrespectful, that's the thing. He has arrogance. Uh, has after of, that, he has a lot of arrogance. Uh, I, I'm asking you to believe in Islam. Okay. Uh, submit your willing to only one creator, okay? Allah give you your uh, your reward twice. Okay, let me ask you this question. Okay, okay, okay. Where, where, where? I, I try to translate it to you in, in English. Uh, let me, let me try. No, I, I, I hear you what you're saying. You're saying this is a letter from Muhammad to... And he mentioned okay. about the Arius. Yeah. You do you know about the Arius? Yeah. Right, no, no, no. Arius. 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 Arius, yes, yes, yes. Do you yes. know about him? Yes, I know about Arius. What, what is his, uh... No, 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 tell me what it says in the letter. What does it say about Arius? I, uh, yeah, okay. <clears throat> How did he know about Arius, anyway? Because I had Prophet a degree in... Uh, One second. Uh, How did he know? Prophet? How did he know? Everybody knew about Arius in those days. How did he know about the Arius? So I bet, uh, I'll answer that question, but I want to hear... What did he say about How did a man Arius? live in desert, as you claim, 
No, about the Arius because and about I'll what happened. All right, I'll answer that question. I'll answer that question. How, how did you know? I'm going to answer okay. that question. Mohammed was a trader. He what? went all the way through Syria. He went all the way through the Arabian Peninsula for his wife, Khadija. Syria was predominantly he Christian. Only he, his, he, he encountered... He encountered... He encountered... He encountered Christians on his journeys. This is where he gets all the fabled stories of the Quran from. That's why the Quran is plagiarized in the Quran. This is where he gets all these stories. That's how we knew about Arius. There's he, nothing he, miraculous he, about it. How did he know? What did you know? Everyone how many times? Do you know how many Arius was famous in those days. Do you know how many times Prophet Muhammad, Muhammad traveled? Oh, Let's come back to this hadith. Like come on. What does your letter say? How did he travel? You, no, no, no. What does the letter say? How many times the Prophet Muhammad traveled okay. all his life? It doesn't matter. That's how he heard it. How does it matter? You just So what does he say about Arius? What does he say about Arius? What does he say about Arius? He's a traitor. Tell me. Answer that question, please. What does he say about Arius? I tell you. Can you bring if you would behave like this in our entire conversation, I have always it, no, you didn't. Go and look at our very last debate. Go and look at our very last debate. That's where it broke down, bro. No worries, no worries. It's a cramped park. Don't worry, don't worry. Try and embarrass me from the people. Why did you what, try to do that, bro? Go and look at go and look at your own behaviour in that video. That's where our relationship broke down. You think you're the only one that got offended on that day? You're wrong. Go and look at your behaviour on that day. Okay. Now I'll agree to apologize if you do, but you okay. don't even recognize you did anything wrong. Hold on, hold and that's on. the problem. Hold on. I, I, I have no qualms of not apologizing. That's fine then. But my, my issue So don't is come that, to me all offended. No, no. The issue is. You treat me like okay. trash that no, day. No, no, Towards no. the end of that debate, we started off well. Okay. The, Towards the, the end concept, of that debate. Go on. The, what did he say about Arius? scripture today. What does he say about Arius, please? Oh, if you refuse the message of yeah. Allah, yeah. you're going to get the ism, like the sin of uh, the Arisi Arius. Right, the sin okay. of Arius. Arius yeah. Okay, right. The, the sin of what you make, uh, make against uh, Arius. Yeah. Do you know why Arius was a famous name at the 7th century? Yeah. Why? Because he was... Why was he a famous name in the 7th century? Because what I know about Arius, okay, he was asking the people to believe only in one creator. Uh, no, that's not true. Okay. That's not true. What, he was asking about Trinity? No. He was against the Trinity. So are you saying Muhammad was in favor of Arius? One second. Are you saying Muhammad was in favor of Arius? All the messengers, all the prophets, they uh, come deliver the message. Did Arius to... deliver that message? Arius is not a prophet. Right. Arius is not a prophet. Did, was Muhammad in favor of Arius? He was, in, uh... was Muhammad in favor of Arius? Yes, because he, uh, okay. he's a good man. Did Muhammad he, think he that? Know, he knows the right message is to believe in one okay. creator. I'm asking you, I'm just asking you. Okay. According to your understanding of the literature that you've read from Islamic sources, did Muhammad think that Arius believed in one God? Yes, yes, yes. Right. He now, believed in one God. Right. Now let me give you an example of why you shouldn't trust Muhammad, because I know the history of Arius and you don't. I know, okay. I read about Arius. Okay, shall we do a quick... Did you, did you read... Uh, did you, did where, where was Arius born? I, I don't care about where he's born. He where did he born teach? maybe in Alexandria, maybe. Where did I'm he not teach? Sure. I, I'm not sure. But, it's more likely Antioch. But, 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 what I know... Where did he I, teach? What did he teach? Where did he teach? I'm not sure. Alexandria. Who was his bishop? Huh? Who was his bishop? Huh? Antony. Always... Antony of Alexandria was his bishop. What exactly did Arius teach? Okay. What uh, exactly what Arius teach? Yeah, what exactly did Arius teach? Because you're claiming to you know about Arius. And you're claiming he your teach, prophet knew about Arius. He teach him uh, his, uh, monotheism. His no, he complete. didn't. No, he didn't. Let me explain to you. Oh. Exactly. Let me explain to you what Arius actually taught. Okay? Doesn't matter whether you, doesn't matter. Like, this is just a good history lesson for you. The only thing that's going to happen is you're going to walk away from who this. Fight, who fight against Arius? Let me, let me finish. Let who me finish. fight against Arius? Who uh, attacked Arius? Antony attacked him. No. Yes, yes. He's, Nicholas. No. Let Nicholas. me finish. Let me finish. Okay. Let me finish. He was criticized by his bishop, Antony, okay? A council was called at the council of, do you know? Nicaea, in the year 325 AD, that was attended by how many bishops? 320. One of those bishops was Saint Nicholas. What did Saint Nicholas do? He slapped him in the face. What happened to Saint thank Nicholas? You, thank what, what happened to Saint Nicholas? 
What happened? They nearly defrocked him and they threw him in prison. Now, this happened after what Kambak did Arius teach? Just one second, one second. No, this, happened thinking. After, this happened after... Uh, What's your name, bro? Uh, uh, Nokia. Uh, Nokia. Nicaea. No, uh, no, no. no. Mag, uh, Magma Nokia. Nicaea. Nicaea, yeah, yeah. After Magma Nicaea. Nicaea. Because Arius and his uh, students, or uh, yeah. his students, they w were uh, delivered the message of the right. prophet Jesus. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> only to worship only one God. And I just want to be clear. You one say second. Muhammad that's taught why, this. That's why. I want to be clear. The Nicholas slapped him. Is, is Muhammad teaching this? Did Muhammad teach that Arius taught that? No, you don't. He's just. You don't believe that. Sam no, says no. He's just. He's Sam just, disagrees with you. One second. One Sam second. disagrees. He with just you. mentioned as a historical. Yes. That historical is, 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 is something is, is, is historical take place. What and did Arius? Know, what did Arius teach? You know about it. What did Arius teach? After six hundred years. What did Arius teach? That make him. A what did Arius teach? You understand what the point? What did Arius teach? What did Arius teach? You understand the point. I understand you that you don't know anything this, about Arius. You know about something You don't know anything happened. about Arius. You know about something happened no. before he comes shall, shall I tell you what Arius like taught? Years. Let me tell you what Arius actually taught. Arius actually taught that Jesus was another God. That's what Arius taught. No, that's why Go and say, look into say, it. That's why go and look make... into it. That's why, go and look into it. Did, that's why Arians today did, did mistranslate mother, John 1 by second. saying... Can I ask you something? Right, no. Now now let's get back... The, no, no, no. One second. Nicholas. One second. Did the mother, one second. One second. Let, I, I let's said, go I, back I, I, to the original debate, which is about the Hadiths, which we are getting away from. Did, did. The Hadith state that the ruling classes of the Muslims, sorry, the ruling classes of the Christians, all were invited okay? to embrace Islam. Don't you think it reasonable that at least someone should have recorded that? Like, for instance, if Muhammad had got all the ruling Muslims together and thought, I think we should all become Christians, don't you think that a hadith would have been alive to record that event? I mean, it's a big event, right? The main message is to is the submission. No, that's, we're not talking about that. Monetary. Stick to the conversation. The conversation is about the fact that you have a lie in your hadiths. Your hadiths are lying to you. Never. Yes. Never. Now, How did he know? One second. Go on. One second. How did he know about story happened before he come 600 years ago? Everybody knew about it at that time. Oh my God. According to okay. Islamic sources, okay. wasn't one did, of his uncles a did, Christian monk? Did. Did the, the Wait, mother of Nicholas? One second. You're changing the, the subject. Did the You're trying to change Nicholas. the subject. One second. No. Did the mother of Nicholas? You're trying to change the topic. Did the mother of Nicholas? You're trying, the, you're trying to change. You're trying to change the topic. No, no, no. If, if They're trying to change the topic. The topic the is mother, about this hadith. Did the mother of, uh, of Look Nicholas? Look at what this hadith says. Okay, please. Did the mother of Nicholas become a Muslim or become uh, followed Arius or no? Uh, Just yes or no. So. So, Nicola... Because this make me understand so, everything. Right, look, look the at what mother, this hadith says. The mother right? of Nicholas, did she, did she follow it? Right. Did she follow it? Are you so one no? second, one second, look at this, look okay. at this. Look okay. at the three okay. questions. Your, your information is very why, good. Why are you yeah. running from your I'm hadith? I'm not running. Then let's talk about the hadith. I talk, I'm going to talk right. about right. the hadith. Okay, great, let's but talk about please, the hadith. please, no. answer this question. No, I'm, I'm not running. No, you no. are running, you're avoiding the question. We're talking about the hadiths. That's the conversation you interrupted, remember? You interrupted my conversation about the hadiths that I was having with the other yes, guy. Yes, and I give you a right. proof. So you didn't give me any proof. What? Let's talk about I this show you hadith. The scripture. The Let's scripture. talk about this and hadith. Still, till now. Is it still till you, now? You showed me something. The, uh, you showed me something. Where, when is it dated to? Till now. Where, when till is now. it dated to? Till now. Where, where is it dated to? You don't need to. When is it dated to? You don't have anything to hide it. Is it what? What's the name of the document? Is, is, is the text, the what is the name of the document? The Where is it recorded? The text of uh, the scripture of the text that been delivered to Herak. No. That's it. No, that's your claim. Check, check, check. When is the letter dated and Mr. to? Mr. Google, check. Where, you check. Visit, visit Where, the when is the letter dated visit to? Visit the, the museum and you When is the letter dated to? The, the, the problem, the problem with you is that you just take whatever your teachers tell you. You never check it. I, I, I'm not sure, but in 
and maybe then we didn't pray no. in the prophet time since he uh, come like then obviously if I see another seven after uh, come after let me ask you a question at the time of the prophet did any muslims leave islam no that's a lie <laughs> When the Mus the, the, there's been a number of Muslims, even at the time of the Prophet, that left Islam. When, for instance, the first Muslims were sent to Ethiopia, one of the companions became a Christian in Ethiopia. One of the scribes of Muhammad abandoned Islam, according to your hadiths. No, no, you listen, listen, the listen, listen, no, no. listen, and then later re-embraced it. So, so. Do, do you sure. know? Do you know about the companion that left Islam oh, yeah. in Ethiopia? And the ah, Muhammad. so when you said no, were you lying to me or did you just not remember? No, I'm not lying. You misunderstand what Did you happened. just not remember? Let me explain. Did you just not Let remember? Me explain, Go on. You know about my my prophet more than me, or if I want to ask anything about uh, your book, I ask you. If you want to know anything about my religion, you ask me. But I asked you, and then you gave okay. me an answer, and then contradicted yourself three minutes later. So uh, go on, clarify. When, when the, the people, the, uh, the people worship the idols, attack the Prophet Muhammad and That's his not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Let the Muslim it. that went to Ethiopia, okay. Okay. that became a Christian. Okay. Tell me about him. Okay. okay. Step by step. When they attack them, when they attack the Prophet and his the believers, the Prophet Muhammad, Allah revealed to him that you have to send your the believers to Habasha. And Ethiopia. what happened in Habasha? Okay, okay. And and there is another, and he delivered the message to the king of Habasha. What well. happened in Habasha? If you know, if you know what about happened the in Habasha. Okay. What happened in Habasha? Okay. To so, the Muslim that became a Christian. And he advised them to live, to to go there and live there, and he t told them their king is a judge, uh, is a justice, yeah. is a fair king. Yeah. Okay. And they lived there, and they become community, normal community. And yeah. Yeah. They uh, deliver the message there, they become many people. And what happened there. to the Muslim that became and, a Christian? And after they after 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 a period of time, he he uh, uh, advised uh, advised them to come back again. That's it. Right. What happened you see you didn't answer the question. This is the point. If you're saying you're gonna answer a question and you're not answering the question. You admit that you know that one of the companions of the Prophet when he went to Ethiopia, Ethiopia became a Christian. Is that true or false? Become Christian? Yeah, one of the companions of the Prophet, when he went to Ethiopia, became a Christian. Are you aware of that? No, no. Right. Go and wait, go and wait, go, go and wait. Yeah, let's see if I can find it for you. Let's see if I can find it for you. Bear with us. What's the subject? What's the discussion? He say uh, he talk about the company, uh, one of the companies of the prophet when they travel to Ethiopia, when they uh, make Hijra to Ethiopia, one of the companies he changes uh, religion to Christian. By the way, but by the way, the king in Agashi, he's a Muslim, and our prophet he make pray on him after after his death. No, no, he doesn't know anything, anything about this So, so my, it's, it's connected to Hadith Book 1, uh, Hadith 7, that's talking about the meeting between the Sorry. companions. I'm updating you. You've asked to be updated. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm I was just going to say, I wanted to say it. how you're doing. I've just gone oh, into the discussion. Well, nice yeah. to meet you. What's your name? We spoke before, Kyron. Kyron. Oh, well, um, forgive me for not remembering Kyron. It's not on purpose. So, you've got a Hadith, right? Show, show me. So, you so, said one of Sahaba. Well, would you, guys, whilst I'm just talking with these guys, could you find the name of the Muslim that became a Christian in Ethiopia from the Companion of the Prophets? Yeah. Do you know about that guy? Yeah, I, so what's, what's the point that's being made? I'm just trying to... Uh, uh, firstly, let's establish whether you're aware of the person or not. Yes. Are you aware of the person? He's not. Are you aware of the person? Is, is the question whether Sahaba apostatized from Islam? Whether one of the Sahaba... That's not the, the question, it's I know, proof. I know of at least one, yes. Right. So, just for the record, you're saying that you are aware yeah. that one of the Sahaba apostatized in Ethiopia. Ethiopia, I don't know about. I don't know about. Right. I know of another one. Go on. Who's the other one? Another Sahabi. Can you please? I forget his name. Can you please find it? Uh, 
Guy, Michael, will come on, guys, help me out. I can't talk until the name of the Sahaba that apostatized in Ethiopia, the name of the companion, the Muslim companion that became a Christian in Ethiopia. Right, so here's my thing, right? So you're saying you're aware you're aware of another Sahaba that became uh, apostate Sahabi Sahabi, Sahabi yeah, yeah, that became uh, an apostate. Yes. Right. What what's his name? Just tell I, us a, a, what's his story. I know the story of him is Go on. He, he apostatized and it was, he was basically said that he was buried and the earth wouldn't accept him. Sorry. When, when they buried him, they found him. When they went back, they found his body outside of the grave. His body was not inside, so they buried him and then the earth would not accept him. Okay. And I forget his name. Okay. Are you are you also aware of the scribe? Are you also aware of the scribe? Are you also aware of the scribe that abandoned Islam and then re-embraced it later? But he apostatized because he was writing down the revelation of Allah, and then he said something, and then Muhammad said that what he had said was the continuation of the revelation, and then he left Islam. Are you aware of that story? What a company now, yeah, so you do know about this story. So you and he apostatized, didn't he? Yeah. Right. Now, hold on one second. Right. Are you? Do you agree with me? Do you agree with me that if someone lies, they shouldn't be? Uh, it shouldn't be a Sahih Hadith if they. Lie. Can I just say this? This is a Hadith from Bukhari where there was yes the, uh, interaction between. Can you? So I can pick you up on my microphone. Will you take your mask off? I'm, I'm a bit unwell at the moment. Fair enough. I don't want to. Pass I, I'm willing to risk it if you. I, I don't mind I, I, if you I don't, don't mind. It's been quite serious. Fair enough. Three okay. Weeks, been no worries. No worries. No worries. Um, this interaction between Abu Sufyan yeah. and Heraclius. Yes. Yeah. And he went to him and he, this, he asked him about the Prophet Muhammad. So I sent him like, is, is he this and is he that and whatever. Um, and then, like you said, it came to this question. Does anybody who embraces the religion, what does it say? Renounce the religion. Are they yep. pleased and renounce it? Yeah. This, this, um, when this, when this question was asked, if you look at the timeline, like when, when the interaction between Abu Sufyan and Heraclius was, yeah. as far as I know, you can verify this and you can correct me, but I, I, I'm confident this is, this, is, this is correct. This was prior to the event of this man apostatizing. This, this, the, the, you know the Sahabi you said, like you said about yeah. the scribe? But not before what happened in Ethiopia. Sorry? Well, not before what happened in Ethiopia with the Sahabi who apostatized in Ethiopia. I, with regards to the timeline, to be honest with you, the one that was spit out from the grave. Right, and anyone found it yet? Blood fire, great help. And also, and also Bob, it's possible, <laughs> it's, it's possible as well that Abu Sufyan, yeah. the news of somebody apostatizing in Ethiopia had not reached him. Right. So now, that's a possibility as well. That's a, but, but it's also possible that he lied. Who lied? That he knew and that he lied. Who, who lied? Who, who lied? Abu Sayyid. Abu, Abu Sayyid. Sufyan. 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 Yeah, Abu Sufyan. Abu Sufyan was not a Muslim. Right. Okay, so you're saying he wasn't a Muslim? No, at right. that time. Abu Sufyan was, uh, okay. was the leader of the, the, uh, Mus uh, the opposition of the Muslims. Okay. So, when so we do history... After, after the, battle of the, first, the Battle of Badr, yeah. the Muslims had against the, uh, the Quraysh. Yeah. The, a lot of the prominent leaders of Quraysh died and Abu Sufyan took over as the leader of the opposition against the Muslims. Yeah. When he had the interaction with Heraclius, he wasn't yeah. a Muslim himself. Okay. Right, let's uh, let's just pull this up. He became a Muslim later on after the Sulh Hudaybiyah, when there was the uh, treaty between the Muslims yeah. and, the, and the pagan Arabs yeah. before the conquest of Mecca. So, so, he was not in a position then to answer the question, was he? Abu Sufyan. Yeah, at that time. What's, what the question where he said, does anyone renounce the religion? Yeah, he couldn't answer that question. Because if you're saying that he might not have known yeah. that someone from Ethiopia had left Islam, right. which is a reasonable, a, is a reasonable argument, right? Then logically it follows that he wasn't in a position to answer the question. Right. Agreed? Abu Sufyan, if he's not fully aware of all of it, the it, it, Yeah, he can't, say, he can't say that no one leaves it if right. he doesn't know I mean, that it's, someone had left it. It's, it's fair to say. It's fair to right. Say, yes, yeah. But that means when he said no one leaves it, he was yeah. speaking in error, wasn't he? Perhaps he was. Right. Now, that 
ends up being a deceit. He's now lying to Heraclius. Yeah, but he's, he's, remember, he's pagan Arab, he's not a Muslim. Right, but, but, you said that, you as a Muslim say yeah. that someone who is a known liar shouldn't be in the chain of a Sahih Hadith. Yeah. They can be in a Daif, yeah, 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 they can be in maybe a Hassan, Bob, Bob, I don't know how the Bob, rules Bob, work, but they can't be in a Sahih. Do you get my point? Bob, Bob, I understand. Do you get my point? I get the point. Okay. We'll, we'll talk about Hadiths later, brother. I want to talk to you, it's fine, but I know you're not, you don't believe in Hadiths. He does. I'm, I want to talk about the Hadiths. One second, please don't try to hijack this conversation. It's not fair to him. Go on. So, Abu Sufyan, like at the time, when this happened, this interaction anyway, he's not a Muslim, right? So, of course, like anything that Islam is teaching, at that time, let, let, let's say for argument's sake he lied. Let's say for argument's sake he lied, yeah? Yeah. Or, there's, there's different possibilities. It could be he lied, it could be he was unaware, and from what he, his knowledge of the, the Muslims that were in Mecca, who were uh, among them, none of them had renounced the religion, from his knowledge of the people around him, right? So. From his knowledge, they haven't renounced the religion. Yeah. So, you know, if somebody apostatizes in in, in uh, Britain, for example, or wherever it may, you know, far away, he's not going to know about it. Obviously, they weren't. Do, do you see my point? He, right. He, he doesn't. If he doesn't know, he doesn't. He, he's talking from his observation. And yes, it's possible he could have been. He could have been lying. But the the teachings of Islam, he's not. Um, he's not following the teachings of Islam at that time. Yeah. Do you, see, do you see my point? Right. Ab, you, you know Abu Sufyan's son-in-law um, happened before Abu Sufyan became a Muslim. Sorry, what do you mean? So, sorry, b sorry, before Abu Sufyan met Heraclius, right. Abu Sufyan's son-in-law had apostatized. Let me give you the evidence, right? Uh, let me just... Uh, so the, the person in question is Ubaidullah Bijash. Does that name ring a bell? Ubaidullah Bijash. Right? You can find this story. Yes. You can find this story in Ibn Ishaq, The Life of the Prophet Muhammad, written by Gilliam, 1967. Let me read what he writes, right? Ubaidullah went on searching until Islam came. Then he migrated with the Muslims to Abyssinia taking with him his wife, who was a Muslim, Umm Habiba, and Abu Sufyan. When he arrived, there he adopted Christianity, parted from Islam, and died a Christian in Abyssinia. So that's before, that's before um, Sufyan meets Heraclius. So Sufyan went with, his, went with him to Ethiopia, to Abyssinia. So he no, knew no, no. what had happened. Ab Ab Abu, Sufi Abu Sufyan never went to Ethiopia. He didn't, he didn't go to Ethiopia. So do you not think he'd ask questions like, why has my relative not returned from Abyssinia? Yeah, he, wasn't, he, he wasn't there, he didn't go there. No, do you not think though, like that when his relative doesn't return from Abyssinia, he might inquire as to why? Okay. Isn't that the yeah, normal yeah, thing normal. to do? Of course right. Makes sense. So what I'm pointing out to you is that in the text of the Hadith itself, one at the source, the very source of the Hadith is seen to lie to Heraclius because he says something he knows that is not true. Does it say that Abu Sufyan, the news of his, uh, was it his son-in-law it said? What? It said? Who was it who apostatized? A relative basically. Relative yes, it says, right, uh, basically, right, hold on one second. Yeah, he was Abu Sufyan's son-in-law. Right. So he was a relative. Okay. Now you know and I know that Arab families are tight today. They were even tighter back in the day. Like, they were tight units. They still are. It's one of the things that I admire, you know, but... It's possible the news of his apostasy did not reach Abu Sufyan. But by the time, what, what's the gap between the, the episode in Abyssinia and Abu Sufyan going to meet Heraclius, do you know? Time span between this yeah. event here. Yeah, yeah, this event and the Abyssinia I, event. I can't say I do know it's exactly. worth investigating. I don't know it myself. It's a good question for both right. of us to go away and investigate. But let us let us conclude. Let's, let's, let us just, let us be just, charitable. Just, let it just just to, just to emphasize. Sorry, just to re-emphasize what I'm saying. It's possible. 
the Abu Sufyan, regardless, because look, if he's gone to uh, Abyssinia, yeah. the, man, the, the relative, and he's apostatized over there, yeah. it's possible that that move of the apostasy never reached him, regardless of the time span. It's going to be two months, two years, 12 years, until Abu Sufyan died. The apostasy, the, the news of that could have perhaps never reached him. That's, that's, that's right. So, but it's also possible that Abu Sufyan's son in law went to Ethiopia. With his daughter, remember, because he's a son-in-law, so we're guessing the wife who was a Muslim, who is the daughter of Abu Sufyan, they stayed there in Ethiopia, and then when his daughter and his son-in-law don't come back, Abu Sufyan goes, why haven't my daughter-in-law, my daughter and my son-in-law come back? And they go, the, the, the reply is, oh, because he's become a Christian. That's more possible and more probable Unless these two events are separated by days or weeks. Like I said. Right, so it's, the important question is to go away and check out, for both of us, because I don't know either, the date. But let us assume, let us be charitable and come to the middle ground. Let us say that Abu Sufyan did not know. But that means that he wasn't in a position to say that no Muslim ever left the religion. And to speak, to speak in a way that is erroneous and to mislead people when you don't not in a position to know shows that you're not a reliable source of information would you agree if i speak about things that i don't know it means that i'm not a reliable source of information all, all the muslims in the comments will say oh that's true that's true that's exactly what you are and they'll use that as an argument against me well i'm using it against abu sufyan right now I saw that see what i did there as i said previously abu sufyan at that time was not a muslim so? So what I'm saying is, if he lied, if he did lie, yeah. so I, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you. Yeah. I'm not saying that he didn't lie. Right. It's possible he did. Yeah. Let's say it's, pos it's possible he did. But for him, he did not see, like, if Islam, if it comes to, like, for example, like the, um, the hadith and the people who narrate them and their reliability and the fact that they don't lie, they're honest people, whatever it may be, he himself, if, if, the, if he does not feel the teachings at that time of Islam apply to him, I am not lying. Yep. You know, and whatever. Yep. Okay. And if, 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 one, one second. You, and, 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 just give me a second. He didn't lie, by the way. No, no, I'm not I, saying he does. I'm saying he, he, he never lied. No, no, no. But I tell you something. I, I've shown you that he did no, lie. I'm you. showing you that he did lie. Brother, please, let me finish my point, please. And then yeah, he, he's, he's actually at least dealing with the arguments. Go on. So, if, if he did lie, if he did lie, I'm not saying he did. I'm saying, okay, perhaps he did. Perhaps he did lie. Perhaps you're right. He lied. But the teachings of Islam, he does not feel apply to him. And then later on, he embraces Islam and he renounces his ways, his previous ways of being a liar, if he was. And right. Lying there. Okay. By right. the way, by the way, let, let by the way this conversation during the Hudaybiyah yeah. agreement, yeah. Yeah. during the Hudaybiyah, yeah. you know, so Hudaybiyah, yeah. 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 this means after the Ghazwit uh, Ahmed. Right. Okay. Right. So okay, you have to direct him. Like, uh, like step by step. Yeah, step by step. Right. Uh, the what happened? The chronology. To, yeah, historically. Wait, well, no offense, bro, but when I tried to give you the opportunity to talk about this, you didn't. He is. So he is, I want to talk uh, to him. Is, I, I, I want to talk to you because you're actually engaging in the argument that I made. Right. So here's my can other. I, can I not? No, no, no. No, okay. no I want but to I, talk to him. I, no, I brother. Give we me tried. For one no. question and one, I go. Very quickly. Go on. What's the question? One question please. Nicholas did his mother. Arius or no? I don't know. Okay, now let me come back to you. So, in terms of in terms of the question, right? Because what I'm what I'm trying to let me make, be clear about what I'm saying to you. I'm saying to you that I've got strong evidence that your Sahih Hadith collections have a lie inside them. Now, you tell me if I were correct, just hypothetically. If I were correct that I have demonstrated a lie inside your Sahih Hadith collection, what are the implications of that? The thing, the thing, the thing is here, if, if there's, like, because he, he's narrated, like, I, I don't know the narrator of the Hadith. Did it say Abu Sufyan, that Sufyan was the narrator of that? I can tell you. Bear with us. Else who was a witness to it and was, was basically... I can tell you. Bear with us. Yeah. I should be able to. Narration chain. 
Now, I don't quite know how the app lays it out, so I'm guessing it's in chronological order. So I'm guessing it goes Ibn Abbas, Ubaidullah bin Abdullah bin Ultba, Al Zuri, Shubay bin Hamza, Al Hakam bin Nafi, Abdul Al Yaman. So Abu Suyaf doesn't even appear in that list. Abu Sufyan. Abu Sufyan doesn't even appear in that list. So right. I mean I'm not I haven't quite quite figured out how the app what what it's telling me here to be so, honest but so that is as you can see narration chain that's the list of names that so it gives you just just to address the point you said is it possible that there's a lie in your hadith what's the implications, what's the implications if there is a lie so, in the hadith collection yeah. so let's say for example now Abu Sufyan was lying it was a lie he, yeah. he he um, he actually the news reached him yeah. that somebody had apostatized. Again, like I said before, it's possible the news is not reaching. Yeah. Now, let's say he lied. He did lie. As, as I said previously, he did not feel that the teachings of Islam applied to him. Yeah. So, even if he did lie then, it, it, it's not... That's not the question that I asked you. So let's try again. The question that I asked you was, if it turns out that I'm correct and this is a fabricated hadith, i.e. the conversation a, never took place in the first place, it's a total that, fabrication. That was not the question. What is the implications if there is a lie in the Sahih collection? That was the question. Try again, please, yeah, to no, answer no, that no, question. No, no, no. Your question was not that. It was about, about fabric. you said about fabricated hadith just now. If there is you said, a you said, lie... You said, what's the implications if there's a lie in the Sahih hadith? That's the question. Yes, so if one, of the, if one of the hadiths is a lie, what's the implications to the concept of Sahih, like, the collection look, of Sahih? It doesn't, it doesn't affect it at all, I'll tell you why. Right, go because on. So if, if he lied, if he lied, right? No, if the entire hadith is a lie, yeah, like... You're saying a fabric. The question was I am. A, so let me be clear. No, no, no. Let me just clarify what you're trying to say. I don't. Well, want how about I, I just want, tell you? I'll tell you in one sentence. No, because maybe I misunderstood. Well, so let me tell you in one sentence, so you can't misunderstand. In one sentence, on. this hadith from beginning to end is a total fabrication. That was not your argument. That is my argument. You came into it late. If you had been here from the right, beginning, you would know that that's but, what but I was saying. When we were discussing it, that's not what you told me. You, said, you weren't saying that the hadith, the integrity, we weren't talking about the integrity of the hadiths. Well, this is what um, happens when you jump into a conversation only halfway through, is that you don't pick up well, where, did, it, where it was going. Well, that, that's, that's what you're going right, to so now, So now this is my argument. Now, now the argument is a fabrication of the hadith. Yeah, the whole of the hadith is a lie. One of my proofs that it is a lie. Shall we take a step back from the barking dog? Uh, it's, okay, it's okay. Right. One of the, the, the proofs that it is a lie is that the, the one of the people in the story, let's just say he wasn't a Muslim, is shown to be someone who is willing to lie. I've already explained this. Though. Right. I, I know what you've said. I know yeah. what you've said. Yeah. You're saying that you're he didn't know about the laws of Islam. Right. 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 But I would say that even a pagan knows that no, you no. shouldn't no. lie. No. Even a but, pagan knows that you shouldn't lie. But, no. I don't think Islam's special in saying you shouldn't lie. No, no. I'm not. I'm not saying that either. But what I'm saying is, if he's gone from being a like, because this hadith itself, you're not coming. I don't. You're arguing, when you're saying about it's a lie. You're not basically saying it's inauthentic because it's it's found in the Sahih, isn't it? Sahih what I'm Bahari. saying is, yeah, so what I am saying yeah. is that because this entire hadith is a lie, it means but, that you cannot no, no, know no, no, no. what are reliable well, and unreliable when, hadiths. When you say it's a lie, are you saying the words where Abu Sufyan was saying that when I'm he I'm saying said, no. the entire story is fiction from beginning to end. Why do you say that though? Right, Where's great, your evidence for great that? question. Where's your evidence for that? Right, so here's my evidence, my, right. my, my, my points of evidence. Point number one, right. the source of the story is himself in the story seen to be a liar. Two, right. the hadith itself only appears in the ninth century. It's 200 years after the event. Yeah. Yeah. It's 200 years after the event. Three, we have no corroborating evidence that this event occurred when we can reasonably expect corroborating evidence to be there. Four, what we actually know about Heraclius flies in contradistinction to the person that is being portrayed 
in the story. Now, which one of those right. four so, uh, art points do you want to interrogate? So, you're essentially one, saying... The, 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 the person in the story, the source of the story, is seen to be a liar. We've already discussed that. Yeah. Two, it was it's a 9th century story, not a 7th century story. Bearing in mind, it was written at a time when Muslims were fighting the Romans right. that they're now, writing about. Now let's let's just go back to point one. Point, right. point one. I'd like to move on to point two, three, or four. Let, well, let's let me address it as you've explained it. Now you've gone. I don't want one, two, three, four to remember them okay, all. Okay, fair enough. Fair we enough, do it one enough. at a time. Yeah. Yeah. So point one, you're saying about the the, the person who is narrating it lying. I'm not saying he did. I'm saying it's possibly he did. Right? I think he did. Right. So. If, for example, you told a lie in the past, you told a lie, yeah, and you're no longer a liar, you're truthful, and you narrate the story of the past of when you lied, that doesn't mean because you lied in the past that you cannot be trusted now. But shouldn't you tell the people you're telling the story to that at this point I lied? Like, isn't that what an honest man does? He goes, I lied in the past, right. and what I said then here, I said this, yeah. but I was lying. Yeah. But again, we have not established. Remember when we said about this, the, his daughter and his uh, son-in-law going to yeah. Abyssinia? Yeah. We've, we've not established whether the uh, story of his apostasy had reached Abu Sufyan. Right. So it's possible that he lied and it's possibly told the truth. But, it's all, yeah, but, but it is possible. And I think what you need to do, and what I need to do as well, yeah. we need to look at the time differential yeah. Yeah. between what happened, the events of Abyssinia, yeah. according to Islamic sources, right. and this event. And, and the event and, of Heraclius. Because I honestly think that it is quite right to assume that if Abu Suya, Sufyan, Sufyan. Sufyan's daughter didn't come back, <laughs> from Abyssinia because she stayed with her husband who had converted to Christianity yeah. you, that he would that, that, that Abu Sufyan would go where's my daughter where's my son-in-law people these families were tight-knit communities Arabs depended but, but, on one but another remember, survival at that time let's let's move sorry. the argument forward can I just can I just at that point just to address your point like about the tight-knit communities yes you're right they were they're very tight-knit um, and they value tribe over perhaps many things, tribe and family and... and, and, and. So, uh, when she, um, say for example, so she stayed, say for example she remained, she and her husband remained over there. Oh yeah, that's, a, that's, that's another point I was going to make, is at that time, when um, the I can barely hear you, bro, to where the Ethiopians, when they sorry, the, the Muslims moved to Abyssinia. Yeah. Yes, they were the pagans were concerned about that, and they sent like a um, a representative to go and speak to the king, yeah. so that the Muslims may be released and sent back to Mecca. So they were concerned. I'm not saying they weren't concerned with the affairs of the Muslims in Abyssinia because they did send somebody over there to try and convince the king yeah. to send them back to them. Yeah. Um, but bear in mind, that was not their main concern, the, the Muslims of Abyssinia. Their main problem, their main threat, what they felt threatened by was the Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, may blessings and peace of God right. be upon let, him. Let, let, let's, let's come back to the, the second, the, what we know about her. Let's come to what yeah. we know about her. Just, just let me finish this point. Because it, it I've, you've made, you've given like many points. I just want to just touch on one at a time and just we move it on from that. Um, the affairs of the, the Muslims, it was not, the spotlight was not just on them. There was stuff going on in Mecca as well. Like they had the, the, the Prophet Muhammad, they, you okay, know, the, the, all of this is irrelevant to it's, the It's argument. relevant, it's, on, it's, it is relevant, it is let, relevant. Let, let, let's the, come the, to the, the actual The reason why it's argument. relevant, the reason why I'm saying this, I'll tell you why it's relevant. Oh, look, 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 let, look, let me just make, finish this let, point and I'll let you continue. Okay, let me just finish please, this point. The reason why it's relevant is because it's possible that due to what's happening in Mecca, because the Prophet Muhammad, him and his mission, what he's doing and the separation he's causing because of the people becoming Muslims. Yeah. Families disowning their, their, their yeah. relatives, go on, right? Go on, go on. Because of this, what's going on there, something like the news of somebody apostatizing. They not, or, or sorry, like uh, being this concerned. This is his being daughter, bro. But hear, hear this, hear this. <laughs> the con his concerns with what's going on in Abyssinia may be, not be tantamount to what's going on in Mecca at the what, time. What, be, be honest, if your daughter disappeared, wouldn't you ask a question yeah, where but, she is? but remember, 
that at that time that was perhaps a, for him for him for Abu Sufyan not as important as what's happening in Mecca well you people will have to decide whether whether if, you know people love their children anyway let's move the argument forward because what we do know about Heraclius is this do you know anything about Heraclius do I know anything about him yeah what, what do you know about Heraclius um, apart from this story do you know anything apart from this story? About Heraclius? Well, Do you know I mean, anything? I mean, I guess from I have not read, you know, too deep into the the history of the um, East uh, Byzantine Empire, Eastern Byzantine Empire, and their leader. Yeah. Um, so yeah, my, my knowledge is as far as it, as far as. Uh, okay, so let, let me. Oh, at this point. The, the, the beautiful bit about this section of the conversation, all you're going to do now is increase in knowledge. Just going to tell you a little bit about Heraclius, okay? Right? I mean, this is this is why we, you know, the, the should be the intention of all of us when okay. we come in. So, Her, uh, Heraclius was born in Cappadocia, 641. What's the sources that you're reading? Uh, from, I'm by using the way? Uh, Britannica. Okay, the Encyclopedia Oxford, Britannica. The, the, the Encyclopedia Britannica. Okay? He was an Eastern Roman Emperor between 610 and 641. He reorganized and strengthened the imperial administration and the imperial armies, uh, but lost, obviously, Syria, Palestine and Egypt yeah. uh, to the Muslim conquests. He was born in Eastern Anatolia. Um, let me just move on to... Yeah. In 610, Heraclius dropped the anchor of Constantinople, deposed focus as Emperor, and was crowned uh, emperor of a crumbling empire. Okay. Shall we move away from the shouty person? Uh, Shout. Where to? Um, shall we move over there a bit? No worries. Wait, sure. guys, we're going to move over there. Do you want to grab your camera? So, from the Oxford Britannica, right? So, the Persians overrun large parts of Anatolia. The Turkic Avars, who ruled over the Slavic and other tribes that occupied the region between the Don and the Alps, exacted tributes. In 614, the Persians conquered Syria, Palestine, taking Jerusalem and what was to believe Christ's cross in 619, okay, uh, and occupied uh, Libya, right? An effort to placate the Placars, Heraclius met them at Thracian Heraclea. They sought to capture him. He rode back to Constantinople. He was pursued all the way, right? So this is a man who's fighting for his empire, right? Now, I don't know if you know by then, but they were also deeply religious. In 622, clad as a penitent and bearing the sacred image of the Virgin, he left Constantinople as prayers Constantinople. rose. Constantinople. as prayers rose from its many sanctuaries for victory over the Persians, the Zoroastrians and the recovery of the Holy Cross and the reconquest of Jerusalem. So those were his goals. Capture Jerusalem, reclaim the Holy Cross, and he went out as a penitent carrying an icon. Now the point that I'm making, because I, I don't want to talk too much, I just want to, I'm going to land on this point now so you can reply, is that when we look into the history of who Heraclius was, he was a man of deep piety and commitment to the Christian faith. Right. Now, do you think that a man of deep piety and commitment to the Christian faith is going to abandon the religion because of the conversation that is recorded in Sahih Al-Bukhari 1.7? Do you know what happened in that conversation? In that conversation. So, from, from what I recall of the conversation, he asked some questions. Abu Sufyan some questions about the description of yep. the Prophet Muhammad. Yes. He asked him questions and um, he responded, however he responded, Abu Sufyan did. It's possible, it's possible, you, you'll see people that they have a few questions. Like when it comes to Al-Islam, how you doing Afi? Salaam alaikum, you alright? You alright? When it comes to the religion of Islam, yeah. someone may say to someone here in Speaker's Corner, or ask the question, Who, what do you believe about Jesus Christ? As a Muslim, what's your belief in Jesus? We believe that he's a prophet of God and a messenger, like Moses and Abraham and, and those who preceded them. Um, and what is your belief concerning 
this, 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 and that, right? Can, can we just go through what the question in yeah, no, what the I'm question in Hadith? I'm addressing it. It's about it's, it's relevant to Heraclius. So, because you asked me, is it possible that such a man, as you read, he was penitent, he was carrying the cross, who led the first Christian right, religious yes, crusade, right? Is it possible that this man would leave Christianity? Based, based, on on this that, based on this conversation with Abu Sufyan, I would say yes, it's possible. Right, let, let's actually look at the question. Bearing in mind, right, what I've read from you from the British Oxford Encyclopedia is that we see a man who leads a religious war to retrieve a piece of wood. He wears penitential clothes, even though he is an emperor. Yeah. And he goes out and he fights for the Christian faith yeah. against the pagans of the Persian Empire, right? And these are the questions that he asks according to this hadith. And you're trying to suggest that this is enough to convince him. And I don't think it's, it is. It's, it's possible. No, it's I don't. Because that, right. that's, that's, let's be fair. What I, if I say yes, it's possible he did. You say no, it's not. It's our opinion. Right, but, but the point is, we are both people of experience. We both know people of deep commitment and faith. This. Now, while it is possible for a person of deep commitment and faith to change their religion, and they do, yeah. all the time. I was just speaking to a Muslim this week who's become a Christian in Egypt, right? They, they, they do change their faith all the time. It's not uncommon. But people of deep faith and commitment don't do it on their very first encounter it's, it's, it's with a new religion. It's, it's, it's possible. It's possible. I don't. It's right. possible. And, and if you if you look into the like the the history of people who've accepted Islam, you may find many. You might find uh, like people who were nuns, monks, devoted in, in monasteries and vice versa. They have one conversation. They embrace Islam at the end of that conversation. Right. Let, let's actually look it's, at the questions a, that, that that are put into the mind. Let, let's look at the, the questions that Heraclius asks, okay? Right? He asks these questions, right? So the first question he asks is, what is his family status amongst you? The second question he asks, has anybody amongst you ever claimed the same before him? To which the answer is no. That's just the answer, no. Uh, the next question, was anybody amongst his ancestors a king? The answer is no. Heraclius asked, do the nobles or the poor follow him? The answer is, the it is the poor who follow him. Then he asks, are his followers increasing or decreasing? Increasing. The reply is, they are increasing. Then he asks, does anybody amongst those who embrace his religion become displeased and renounce the religion afterwards? Which is the point that we uh, discussed, discussed earlier. earlier yeah. And the answer is no. Then he asks, have you ever accused him of telling lies before his claim? The answer is no. Does he break his promises? The answer is no. We are at truce with him, but we do not know what he will do in it. I could not find the opportunity to say anything against him except that. Heraclius asked, you see here. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Have you ever had a war with him? The answer is yes. And he said, what was the outcome of the battles? The answer is, I replied, sometimes he was victorious and sometimes we. And then Heraclius asked, what does he order you to do? And then he says, he tells us to worship Allah and Allah alone and not to worship anything along with him and to renounce all our ancestors had said. He orders us to pray, to speak truth, to be chased and to keep good relations with our kith and kin. Right, now, according to this hadith, that conversation and those replies are enough to convince a man who had just won a religious war and thanked God for the victory of fighting pagans and fighting this religious war and winning and building churches in celebration of it, but wearing penitential clothes, even though he's an emperor, carrying the icons of the Virgin Mary, using his money and treasure to retrieve a piece of wood because he thought it was sacred. Yeah. And this hadith is meant to convince yeah. us okay. that this conversation no. was enough to convince right. him to right. abandon his religion. Habibi. It makes no Habibi. sense Habibi. at all. Okay, can I respond to that? Yeah, go on. Right. So um, when it when it comes to uh, the converse, like as I said, it's subjective between us. Yeah. If you, you, you can say it's impossible, I can say it's possible, like there may be one question a person has concerning Islam, yep. and it's enough for them to become Muslim. Now, also in, on, on, top of the, on top of that, this conversation Abu Sufyan had with Heraclius, 
it's possible that when Abu, uh, Heraclius went away, he had a conversation with somebody else, or there was, there was more information that he tried to extract from Abu Sufyan, yep. which, in, a, in addition to the questions he had, which was not narrated, yep. and that um, added to his conviction. And okay. he became Muslim. Yeah, carry on. You know? Yep. Um, so, e even if, for example, it said, um, has this man, like the question that he asked, has this man had any, uh, along the lines of, uh, anyone in his, his, his ancestry that were kings? And he said, no. If that convinced him, that convinced him. Yeah. It's, it, it's every, everybody is, is a subjective thing like people accept this it takes some people years and years and years and years to accept Islam like myself like it took me a long time I took what maybe six years go on and then you get somebody else who has one conversation you accept Islam straight away in speaker's corner or wherever you may be in the world it's but everybody's experience varies right I just want to I just want to find you the bit um... but can we not agree on that though that everyone's experience is different but I think there is, I think there is also uh, a degree of reasonableness that we have to apply to this. In that, the, in that, this argument it relies on 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 many angles. The, the one of the keys to this angle, right? Because let us, I'm going to, for the sake of the argument, to demonstrate the point I'm making. I'm going to give you, allow you your point. I'm, I'm not going to wrestle with that point, so I'm going to accept that maybe in his heart he wanted to convert to Islam, right? But the thing is, he announces to the entire people that we're all going to do this, and I want to find it. Um, here we go. Okay, after hearing that, Heraclius remarked that the sovereignty of the Arabs had appeared. Heraclius then wrote a letter to his friend in Rome, who was, a go who was as good as Heraclius in knowledge. Heraclius then left for Homs, a town in Syria, and stayed there till he received the reply of his letter from his friend, who agreed with him in his opinion about the emergence of the prophet and the fact that he was a prophet. On that, Heraclius invited, so we've got correspondence now. So that this, this text is saying that Heraclius wrote a letter and that someone wrote back. Now, my question to you is, how did Abu Sufyan know that? What, what, what information did so you know? after Abu Sufyan clears yeah. off yeah right Heraclius right he stays behind okay and he sends a private correspondence to his to to someone in Rome who sends a private correspondence back right okay how does Abu Sufyan know that these two wrote to one another how does he know about that it's, yeah. pos it's possible it was it was conveyed to him that what? it's possible that that was conveyed to him by who Whoever it may be. Right. So, my point to you is, if Abu Sufyan hears about this letter, why is no one else in the 7th century hearing about this? Hearing about the correspondence between Heraclius, Heraclius and, and, his mate and in Rome. Rome. Yeah. What, what, what do you mean nobody else is hearing about it? Like, well, my, here's my point. Yeah. Because given what this text is saying, we should reasonably expect corresponding evidence. Right. Because this text is claiming right. that Abu Sufyan yeah. knew about a private correspondence between Heraclius and his friend. Right. And if Abu Sufyan learns about it, right. then we can expect that other people knew about it as well. Not exactly. And yet we know not, of no one that talks not, about it. Not precisely. It. Not exactly. I mean, for, exa like, for example, now, if there's a correspondence between um, me and you. Yep. Right? It, it's... it's one person could come to know about it here in Speaker's Corner, the rest, could, the rest could not. It doesn't necessarily mean because one person has learned of that information that many people must... Do you think that, what, do you think that, do you think that the Emperor of Rome and Abu Sufyan became best friends? No, but it's possible that Abu Sufyan knew somebody who was close to the Emperor, close to someone or the person who was corresponding. It's are, are you, are you know, many, there are many ways are you that information know, can reach you somebody. Know the, the, I think that's a cope. Honestly, Sorry, a, what, a, what, a cope. A cope. Cope. When you clutch at straws to try I'm and make arguments. Clutching at straws. No, no, not at all. Because it's, it's. You, you, you know, and I know that it's. Like he has got access to the emperor. He's, Who has? Abu Sufyan. Like he's talking to the emperor. So does the priests. 
Yeah, no, and the what, bishops but what, and the legates. But what I'm saying is, and his count and his how, courtier advisors. How many people in 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 his um, under uh, Abu Sufyan's in Abu, Abu Sufyan's kingdom? Not Abu Sufyan, sorry, Heraclius's kingdom. Yeah, like the. Um, the Romans. Yeah. How many of them do you think had access to Abu? Uh, sorry, Heraclius. Right. That's a great the question. The regular people. Uh, uh, quite a lot, actually. When you're the emperor of one of the biggest empires, mm. you don't get left on your own. You've got courtiers all the time. No, but I'm talking about the general folk. The general folk. I, I, there, there's going to be there's going to be, be people in the Byzantine Empire who know uh, and have access to Oraculus every single day. But not everybody though. Definitely not Abu Sufyan. No, but I'm so, my point is... You're trying, think about yeah, what you're trying to yeah. get me to believe. Yeah. You're trying to get me to believe that some Arab messenger that Heraclius met once knows more about what's happening in Heraclius's private life than his own courtiers and historians. Yeah, no, so, look, Do you see why I'm what, struggling? No, firstly, Abu Sufyan have an access to him. Say, say now there's, there's like the, um, the advent of Islam is kicking up a stir. It's kicking up like a lot, lot of people are hearing about what's going on in Arabia, yeah. about what's happening amongst yeah. the people of Mecca, um, that there's been a battle between the Muslims and the pagans and the Muslims beat them when there was only 313 of them and over a thousand yeah. pagans. Yep. Now, if Abu Sufyan come, he, he, they learn that there's a caravan that's arrived in the kingdom of Heraclius, it's possible then that due to his, he's hearing about this, he's heard there's an Arab caravan, due to him wanting to inquire more, it's possible for that reason. I, I mean, I, with regards to the details of how he, an, he got access to the court of the king, yep. to the court of uh, the emperor Heraclius, yep. I don't know those finer details, whether it's because they heard of the caravan, they invited him in or for whatever reason, yep. but there are ways it, it, it's not an impossibility. And I, also I think, with regards to like the, the, the correspondence. Okay, so and, I, and Bob, can I just say? Yeah. Let me, just to conclude, I'm not. It's, I'm not trying to. I'm, I'm being reasonable. I'm not trying to clutch at straws. It's possible. Like for example, now, like a correspondence between uh, Prince uh, uh, King Charles, for example, King Charles and um, somebody else, a private conversation. It's possible that people like us, even though we're not close to him. We can still somehow get that information due to knowing somebody that works in right. the palace. For so, so there's the thing: is one of the ways that we do history is that we don't add extra theories that are unnecessary to. Well, wait, wait, wait. This yeah. is this is historical sure, methodology. Sure, sure, sure. Is that if the evidence that you're presenting requires ad hoc, uh, ad hoc, extra links in the chain for it to hold up to scrutiny? It means that the evidence you're presenting shouldn't be trusted. Yeah, but the thing is... And that's what you're doing right no, now. But you're adding sure, extra sure. links to the chain because I've, I've asked you a question that demonstrates the falsity right. of the text can, itself. But can I just push back on what you just said? Yeah. Now, going by that um, criteria, going by... Um, you, you're saying, you, you know, you can't... Um, Basically, you're theor theorizing. You need you need evidence. Basically, is what you're saying. I need I need evidence for what I'm claiming. Yeah, yeah. Essentially, now that we can say the same for earlier on with the Abu Sufyan and his his daughter incident. We don't. You do not have evidence that that information reached Abu Sufyan that his son-in-law had apostatized. Which is so, which is why, if you remember, in earlier in the conversation, I said that's a possibility. But I argued why it's also more reasonable to suggest that he would have asked why his daughter had yeah, not but, returned but, from Abyssinia. But, but again, that, that means you're going against your own criteria because you, you're, you're saying no, that Which was, is more reasonable, you're that saying, a man should ask about his daughter's disappearance? No, no hear this, hear this. You're saying that you were trying to say that he was a liar, but you don't have the evidence for it, is what well, I'm saying. I, I do have the evidence. No, no, that, he, that the news reached him concerning his uh, son-in-law apostatized. And that, and that, if you remember, I said what we need to do is we need to check the time differential between the visit to Abyssinia right. and his Correct. supposed conversation with Heraclius. Right. Because the bigger that gap is, the more likely he would have asked the question. Well, what I'm saying is that you haven't verified that and you're making that claim. And you're saying, we, I can't make a claim, but you haven't got the evidence. Right, right. But so, so let the, that's one of the questions everyone should go away and look at. Right. What is the time differential between the event in Abyssinia Fine. and this conversation? Because that. if it is in yeah. months or years, mm. it's reasonable to conclude that he would have asked, where is my 
my daughter. I, I, Why hasn't she come back with right, everyone else? But what I'm saying is, okay, fair enough. I get what you're saying. I'm not saying it's unreasonable what you're saying. But what the point I'm making is, you're coming to me now telling me that I can't give these theories if I don't have evidence. And I'm saying, let me finish, please. I'm just want. I just want to say hi. Peace, really love. Yeah. I've Good seen to see you guys on video cool. so many times. Cool, man. What's your name? My name is Javed. Javed. Nice to meet you. Oh man. Yeah. Nice to meet I've you, man. I've seen your videos. I've seen your arguments, your arguments, Hashem, and it's cool watching you guys. Are you Are you visiting? Are you? I'm visiting. So I May you I just took out some time to come here specifically to meet you guys. Are you a Christian, bro? No. Muslim. I'm, I'm Muslim, but I believe in God, and I think you can. Can I give you a God. gift to welcome you into my country? Okay. Since you've greeted us so friendly, I'd like to give okay. you a gift. All right. Just to show but I'm not from Muslim, don't worry. a bit of, a bit of human fine. solidarity for you. Yeah. Do you have a Bible, bro? Uh, if you're going to give me a Bible, I, I read everything online, so I do have me two Bibles. Then I won't give you a Bible. I'll give you a book you can't get on Eli. Uh, uh. Okay. Okay, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm being rude. I interrupted you guys. There you go. Okay. Merry All Christmas. Right. Thank you. Take care. Take Thank care of you. yourself. Enjoy your stay. Right, so, so but the point, just because just I was talking before yeah, you were. So the, the point I'm making is, you're, you're telling me that I'm basically theorizing. I'm saying you were doing the same thing earlier. What, what I'm saying is that you are, you're trying to explain away uh, something that a, a reasonable man would look at this and go, right, this causes us to doubt the evidence. Explain. Let me finish. Yeah, sure, sure. Causes us to doubt the evidence because the narrator of this hadith is claiming to know about the private correspondence of the emperor. Remember, this emperor spent his entire life. How's my camera going? His over entire there? Sorry, life. Sorry. Yeah. Seems like it was moved, I don't know. Yeah. This emperor spent his entire life fighting the Muslim world. Right? In history. That's that's a fact. Right. Now, the, the other problem with the, so so I've 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 suggested to you that's a good grounds to doubt this hadith and then your response Sorry, sorry, reason, what's what's good grounds to, to the, the the narrator of this hadith right. is claiming to know about the private correspondence of the Roman Empire it's, it's, of the Roman Emperor where not only not only is he saying he knows who he wrote to, but he's saying that he knows what was said. It's possible. It's possible. I, I, I think a reasonable man would no, conclude I, I think a reasonable that without person, corroborating evidence, it's more it's, likely that this is a lie. I know. I think a reasonable person can say that it's it's possible for such information to reach people. How many how many private conversations of like um, in the palace, for example, here? And private conversations amongst like politicians and, inf and and sensitive information gets leaked to the public here. Yeah. So th that's my point about corroborating evidence. If if your argument is true, then and bear in mind what comes next in this story, and I'll just read it because it, it adds to my point, but it's linked to the previous point. So in this hadith, it goes on to say that that on that Heraclius invited all the heads of the Byzantines to assemble in Carry his on, palace Carry at home. How, hold this, please. The Heraclius invited, listen to this next bit, all the heads of the Byzantines to assemble in this palace at home. He, assembled, he ordered that all the doors of his palace be closed. Then he came out and said, O oh Byzantines, if success is your desire, and if you seek right guidance and want your empire to remain, then give a pledge of allegiance to this prophet, i.e. embrace Islam. So here he's invited all of the elites of Rome to embrace Islam, right? Look at their reaction according to this story. On hearing the views of Heraclius, the people ran towards the gates of the palace like onagers, but found the doors closed. Heraclius realized their hatred towards Islam and when he lost the hope of them embracing Islam, he ordered that they should be brought back in audience. So in other words, the Hadith is saying that this is a traumatic event. And this is all the leaders of the Byzantine Empire, that's bishops and its legates, right? Councils, consuls, those kinds of people. Are you telling me that the entire literate class that have this traumatic event, none of them bother to record it? 
in history, none of them put it down in a letter. This is why a reasonable person, if this story was true, would expect would expect corroborating evidence. Okay, can I, can and we have I, none, right, zero, just, nada. Just, just to push back on that, when it comes to like, um, if, because you said if such a traumatic event occurred, yeah. Why was it not recorded by the people that were the contemporary the, the, the people who were there and experienced yeah, like the gospels? Right. It's possible. It's possible. How long ago was this? This is over fourteen hundred years ago. It's it's possible like people here, people in in this day and age, people diary. They they journal, sorry. Yeah. They journal. Yeah. Right? Um they they may go home and they may express it to their 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 family. Yeah. Something happened at work today. Yeah. This this event happened. My boss did such and such. It was yep. such a nasty thing yep. that he did. Whatever. Yep. Um, they just tell their family about it. Yeah. Uh, it's possible that they write it down and they send a letter. Yeah. So all all of just because we don't actually have it does not mean that they did not they did not record it down people have different methods of yeah, communicating yeah no, you're things. arguing that the absence of evidence is not evidence it is, of absence it's basically and i agree uh, the absence of evidence is not evidence of absence mm. but my point to you is this is that in the absence of corroborating evidence in the fact that the evidence the only evidence that you have mm. is 200 years later from the event that it describes Sahih al-Bukhari is 200 years yeah, later yeah. that's another discussion you're talking like, about the hadith because the hadith yeah, the, the, yeah, let, go on. let me continue yeah, go on. the fact that the the character the the story itself raises some really peculiar questions about knowledge that's beyond Abu Sufyan Su Sufyan's uh, control to know which which the knowledge private about correspondence is, between the emperor it's, it's, of Rome it's, and the French. It's, it's not beyond this is the his, fact uh, that the fact that the the there's a question mark about whether Abu Sufyan is a liar in the story the fact but, that but then he could be truthful the fact that the fact that the entire elites of the Roman world according to this story go through a dramatic experience and we find no corroborating evidence to it at all none from the seventh century the fact that what we do know about Heraclius is that he was a deeply religious man who fought a religious right. war to retrieve a right. religious icon and recapture the holy city of Jerusalem all, right. all, right. all point to us as knowing or of, of having certainty a high degree of certainty that this hadith is a fabrication right. okay just to push back now when it comes to again like um Abu Sufyan and his integrity as we've said we have not we've not proven either way myself or yourself that Abu Sufyan received the knowledge the information the news of his daughter um, his son-in-law sorry apostatizing um, when it comes to the corroborating evidence there could be one witness like for example this gentleman here witnesses our conversation only him witnesses our conversation and then years and years later, a thousand years later, it said that Bob and Kyron, they had a discussion about such and such a thing. And then for somebody to turn around and say, well, but no, there was no other people that said it. To be clear, it's the entire elites of the Roman Empire. Okay, sorry, that are okay, invited sorry, to sorry, 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 okay. Let's just say there's a group of people here, a group of people. The most all, of, all, of, the most all of Speaker's Corner, all of speaker, Speaker's Corner, we're here listening to our conversation. Just because the accounts of the of, of majority of the people don't survive history, it does not mean that because only one of them survived, that because the others didn't, that his one is is not reliable. We can't let depend me, let upon Let me ask it. you this question: What do, do, you, do you, no, but do you see that point I just made? I see the, the point, point that you're making, but your your argument I think is unreasonable. Why is it unreasonable? It's unreasonable because this is the the elites of the Rome. I've, I've, I've stated why I think it's unreasonable. The evidence is late, the evidence is singular, the evidence itself contains discrepancies that immediately alert someone uh, to its biases. It's in sorry, the sorry, okay. no, a, for yeah, a point no, I sure, didn't mention sure. before, yeah. it's in the context of a war against the Byzantines, right. in which Muslims occupied Christian land, the Byzantine land, and Byzantine populations were around. So this okay. suits, this suits 
uh, the, 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 okay. the context of being propaganda to discourage those native populations, sorry, native populations. It suits the idea of it right. being propaganda okay. to discourage what, what biases, those Christians. What biases do you find within there do you feel um, makes it out to be uh, propaganda to try and... Um, so within the story, yeah. the problems within the story, it's trying to convince me that a deeply religious man asked a couple of questions and suddenly decided that he wanted to become Muslim. But we already addressed that. Bearing in mind how the Byzantine yeah. court worked, the Byzantine emperor would have known mm. that if he had suggested, because I don't know if you know anything about the Byzantine emperor. Remember when I read from uh, Encyclopedia Britannica? Right. Heraclius actually deposed Emperor Focus. Do you remember I read that? The reality is that Roman emperors were always finding excuses to topple one another. Okay. The main reason for toppling someone was military failure, right? But in this time, bearing in mind that it is on the back of the, the fact that Christians have fought these schismatic battles against heretics, right. from Arius to Nestorius and so on, the idea that the emperor would have endangered his own position by saying to the entire elites of the Roman Empire, let's change our religion. It doesn't right. smack true okay. of history okay. because me, an emperor right. Right. would have placed his own position in danger right. by doing that and he would have been toppled as but an it's, emperor. It's, it's, yeah, I mean, okay, perhaps perhaps he would be um, um, toppled if he, if he was to say such a thing or propose such a thing to his um, you know, his council or whatever, whoever it was that was around yeah. him. But when you see, like, for, the, for example, the like the companions of the Prophet Muhammad before they were Muslim, yeah. right? They they had certain positions. You have Mus'ab bin bin Umayr. He was a prominent. He he was a, a very wealthy individual at the time, and when he accepted Islam, he lost that. He lost his 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 mother withdrew her support. Um, you know, the Muslims, they lost a lot. And when it comes to the faith of an individual, yeah. and you even see this in this day and age, how many Muslim people become Muslim and they get kicked out of their houses? A Sikh, Sikh, I know somebody who's a Sikh, became Muslim, is kicked out of his house. It's like the Christians that right. get abused in... Uh, I know a sister right. who became a Christian up, up north, in north of England. She, she is... You know, her parents have turned around and said to her, because you've left Islam, you have to leave the home. Yeah, um, look. And she's been a beautiful daughter so, to so, her so, But look, my argument is not, oh, <laughs> um, about people, like, I'm not, I'm not basically trying to say Christians are bad because they kick Muslims out. People, when they become Muslim, they leave Christianity and they become Muslim, they kick them yeah. out of the house. I'm, that's not the point I'm making. What I'm saying is that when people accept a faith like when they accept islam yeah. you'll, you'll see these uh, individuals being told to leave the house yeah. being stripped of position whatever it is that happens but they they they, they stick firm to their religion still yeah they're they they they're, because of their faith they 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 are willing to endure right they're, now they're, i'm going to prove to you that they're, they're willing to your let me source, let me finish get your point. let me finish okay, they're willing to endure right, sure they're willing to endure uh any you know anything that their the family wants to throw at them they're willing right. to endure it so what i'm saying is when it comes to heraclius because you're saying about him being toppled they would these um basically because he's an emperor it would be beyond him doing such a thing because he would lose his position it's not impossible yeah when faith settles in the heart of somebody yeah. they may be willing to lose their life okay. their family and, right. and so and, and i heard your argument now, 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 now. Her Her heraculus heraculus and heraculus. Yeah. so 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 now, la na now now let me show you now let me show you why that argument doesn't work even according to this text because as the brother just beat me to the punch are we still recording yeah drop your gloves right listen to what the or story says about heraculus to show that he's not the kind of person you've just described what? to defend the point against the point i made because i made the point if mm. heraculus really did this mm. he would have endangered his own position mm. and you said well some people um, care more about truth than their own position right do you not agree with that right no do i do not agree, agree with that, that. Lot, that, right. that, that, that christians did that right but, but so here i'm going to show you from your own story because it goes on to say 
that when he realized the hatred towards Islam and when he lost the hope of them, he said, what already said was just to test the strength of your conviction and I have seen it. The people prostrated before me and became pleased with him. So in other words, according to this story, yeah. he lied his face off to defend his own position. Right. Because he recognized the people weren't with him and so he lied his face off and said, oh no, no, I didn't mean it, I was just testing you. Yeah. To protect his own position. Yeah, right, so according true. to this story, yes, he's yes, a I man see. that would rather keep his position than follow the truth. So right. your argument doesn't work. Ah, okay, okay. No, I see your point. I see your point. I get your point. Now, that, now, means, that uh, means according to yeah, your story, yeah, yeah. this Heraclius was a man of weak heart. But the point is, all of history contradicts that characterization. Heraclius was a, a, a warrior who led his armies into battle on the first Christian crusade against Persian Zoroastrians. Right. Okay. He reclaimed Jerusalem. He reclaimed the Holy Cross. Yeah. He wore penitential clothes. Right. Okay. Just we've, as an we've, we've, we've gone through that. My point is, respectfully, yeah, my point we've is gone the characterization already, yeah. of Heraclius yeah. Yeah. here does yeah. not match okay. what we okay. know about Heraclius okay. from okay. the seventh now, century. Now, just to respond to that, um, okay, I'm not, I'm not saying that what's recorded historically about, like you know, where you said he's, he's gone on. Um, um, with to, what, Constantinople and things he's done for the sake of the religion. I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying Conquering he did. Jerusalem. Uh, yeah, whatever, 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 whatever he did. I'm, I'm not saying that's not historically correct. Um, and when it comes to going back to the narration, because you're saying that it's essentially showing that he's a coward because of um, him uh, saying, "Okay, accept Islam." And then when he saw their reaction, oh, actually, yeah, I'm only joking, or yeah. whatever it is he said, don't listen to what I'm saying. I was just, you know, testing your resilience in your faith. Yeah. Um, now, it's possible that you have an individual that is willing to go on um, a mission, like go, go to, to war for his religion, yeah. to go and conquer, try and conquer lands so that his religion can be um, implemented there. How? However, that same person, that same individual who's willing to go out there and fight by the sword and die by the sword, it's possible that such a person, even though he's willing to die on the battlefield, he's scared of being in prison. He's scared of being tortured. He would have been killed. Right. Now, he just would have been executed. So That's what happened to all the emperors before him. Right. So, go, going, out, going out to war, I mean, he doesn't know. Okay, yes, there's a precedent. You're right. There could have been a precedent of execu a precedent of execution for somebody who um, renounced their religion, for example. It's more like assassination. But... Right. He could have been beheaded, whatever it may yeah. be. But he, in that moment of time, he doesn't know the consequences of him. Of him, like yes, he knows previously this has happened, but he doesn't know whether they're going to take him away, whether they're going to stone him to death, whether they're going to do whatever, torture him, tie yeah. him up. Yeah. So, in that moment of time, and also bear in mind as well, like, when um, people go out to war, yeah. the king, obviously, he gets more protection. He's afforded more protection than the, uh, the, regular, the regular guys. So, he may be more confident when going out to fight, then in a position where it's just him, all eyes on him, if he renounces Miraculous, his religion. Miraculous went into battle. Yeah. No, he was no coward. Yeah, no, I'm not saying that. I, I, the I, historical I Heraclius yeah. was a man who led armies right. and he fought in battles. But, but, but what I'm saying is this. He drew his sword and he fought. Yeah, but what I'm saying. Not, he's what, not what the, this characterization yeah, no, is. No, but what I'm saying is, look, he, Heraclius was the emperor, right? He goes out to war. He's, he is the priority yeah. in the army. He's yeah. the priority. Yeah. He's the most protected amongst all of them. Yeah. Right? So when he, when, when, he, when he goes out to fight in that, in that situation there, yeah. he knows he is the most protected individual in the army. Yes. Right. Now in this position here, he he's knows not he's not, if, if I renounce my religion, like many thoughts may be coming to him. Yeah. Everybody here may turn on me. 
But think about it, and, yeah. and you're right. If you renounced your religion here today, and I invite you to do exactly that, I invite you to, to do the and, same and as to well. Embrace Christianity. I invite you to embrace Islam. By your own words, yep. all the Muslims here would turn on you, and and that's a, a, and, and, an unfortunate and, truth. And that, it's, that, it's, that's that, something that, that may happen to you as well. Are if you if you be, if you became Christian, see how Bob the build, build, Bob the Builder is the worst person on the planet when, it, when it comes Muslim, when it comes I guarantee I would not live in fear when, over the when it when it comes to so when it comes to soco films let's see what they how they dub you after if you yeah, became they wouldn't, they wouldn't the, I'm the sure they would abuse would you me off but I wouldn't live in fear that someone would come and stab me um anyway well, but anyway uh, Karen I think this has been a wonderful conversation okay, right I, I've really appreciated talking with you yeah 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 it's been very decent just, it's been very just, honorable a better finish than a right. start to my day right I'm um, I, 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 like, I'm not going to re-summarise my argument, you've heard it, you've got it on your own camera. Right. Just go and re-look at this argument and think yeah. it, all, all the points through that but I can, mentioned. But can, can, I, I, I respectfully request you also, the points that Sorry? I made, I res respectfully request you also, I will. the points that I made to I consider will. them as well. I will, because and then let's come back and talk about it again. Inshallah. Can I'm I give gonna, you a gift? Sure you can. Um, and I wanted to just say as well, because you, you made a point about, oh, I'd live in fear if I renounce uh, Islam because of being stabbed. You know, there's there's been a lot of uh, killing on the other from the other side as well. Like, look at New Zealand uh, in 2019. More than 50 Muslims were killed by someone who was who was a Christian. That's almost a. You know, he was an environmentalist. Actually, he wasn't a Christian. But he was an environmentalist. <laughs> That's a Muslim lie told by Muslims to other Muslims. The, the terrorist attack in New Zealand was not by a Christian, it was by a, a racist who also happened to be an environmentalist. Right. So, so are you Muslims are you should are you stop are lying you, about you, the attack you, in New you, Zealand. You, no, wait, 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 yeah, this is important. Yeah, sure, sure. Go 50 on. people lost their lives in New Zealand. 50 innocent people died because of a terrorist attack against Muslims. Right. It does not honor their memory for Muslims to lie about that event. Are you and telling shame me? on any Muslim listen, that does listen, so. Listen, he was not listen, a Christian. Fine. Stop lying. You, you don't, we don't have to go on and on about that. But are you telling me that there is no Christians that have tortured, executed, and given Muslims a hard time in history? Okay. I obviously can't say that. Um, so, 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 my, so, so, my point to you, hey, hey, bro, let, let's bring it to a close. We've got went off the topic here. This is my little gift yeah, to you. All right, thank you. you Have a read I, of it. I, you've given me this one already Have last time. Have I given time. you that one? Yeah. Oh, let me give you a different one then. There you go. But I think it's I think it's not fair to, to bring up such a thing like that. What? When you're saying about um, I would fear being stabbed when, you know, on both sides. There's been, I don't disagree with you that there are Muslims How that have done How many Christians have tried to stab a Muslim in this park? Do, do we have to, sorry, in this, in this yeah. park? Yeah. If, if, because what of, happened to Hatun Tash? Look, for one, for one. But look, look, bro, we're getting off the topic. We had a nice conversation. Yeah. I enjoyed fine, it. Fine. I, appreciate, I appreciate your time. And I want to talk we, to we, you again. We spoke from the sun up to the sundown. Yes. <laughs> yes. You, it was are a you, really you, good conversation. Thank you, you so have much. Have you had your lunch? Have you? No, not yet. Not yet. Do you want to go to the cafe over there? Grab, you know something? something I have got a lot of talks to do, but I, I will definitely. Let's let's meet up. Let's go grab a coffee somewhere or on another a day, or maybe even when I'm finished here today, me and you can go to the Marriott Hotel. I'll buy. It's on me. Not even a quick muffin. Nice no, not even a quick hey, muffin. <laughs> co co like they're going to rip you off for cheap stuff. They're going to rip you off for expensive stuff. I'd rather get ripped off over there. And I'll be paying, so you're not.